I was born some years before the start of the First Crusade on the Green Island west of England. You may call it Ireland. I come from a long line of fighters. My great-grandmother marched with the forces of Brian Baru against the, the Danes who built the city of Dublin. She also had an eye for a well-turned sword arm. and She took pity on the Danes. She would have bashed his brains out, but he had a nicely turned sword arm, so she dented his skull a little and took him home to mother. <laughs> and to this day, blonde, blonde hair appears in the children of our young. I was the young, was not the eldest nor the youngest of the daughters of our house, but I had an awkward longing. I liked to travel. When I was very small, I would walk far out into the fields, and someone would have to come get me, usually an older sibling. Once, they tried to make sure that I did not come home from my wanderings. They went out into the fields and called for me and called for me and called for me. I was asleep on the other side of a hedge. They saw me, decided that as I had not answered the call, they would return home without me. Someday I'll get even. <laughs> when I reached the age when women begin to think of marriage, my eye was caught by a man who guarded the merchants who came up the, the river to Dublin from across the sea in Wales. The Welsh are good fighters. We've gone and bashed their heads often enough. He had a nicely turned ankle. <laughs> And so my father arranged things, and I became a wife in Wales. It could be worse. It got worse. My husband's brother was there on a buying trip when the Pope's man preached the crusade. I don't know what possessed him, but he took the cross. The man's barely a Christian. Well... I suppose you could call him Christmas. He, he was baptized. He was Christmas. But he took the cross, and my husband, out of filial loyalty, also took the cross. And not to be left behind, I too took the cross. Do you know how long a walk it is from the far shore of the narrow sea to Byzantium? <laughs> Good. Heavens, if my husband hadn't stolen, I mean, appropriated that mule. <laughs> the winter outside Antioch, you may have heard. To quote the English who speak that barbaric tongue, it was bloody awful. But there I discovered that I was to have a child. <coughs> In the mud and the rain, and the filth outside the walls of Antioch. And so, when the troops marched out, I sent my husband off and said, don't come back without lunch. <laughs> he brought back lunch. I hope the knight found another horse to ride home on. <laughs> <laughs> But we survived the winter outside Antioch, and we survived the march on Jerusalem. And there, outside the walls of Jerusalem, the night before Jerusalem fell, my son was born. The following morning, on the final assault of the walls of Jerusalem, my husband died, and his brother was grievously wounded. So grievously that he need never worry about contributing to the gene pool, as they say. <laughs> But being a good man, he offered me marriage so that I need not fall prey, as so many other widows did, to the unwanted, unwelcome, or unsought-for attentions of the unattached or too well-attached men. We set up housekeeping in Jerusalem once we cleaned blood off the floors. And there I stayed 
during the first year of my son's life. We later moved to Jaffa, and now I can sit on my rooftops and watch the ships come from the west and dream about home. When my son is old enough, we shall make the trip. We shall make the pilgrimage again to Dublin. 